Hi, today I wanted to discuss equipment a little bit and what it is you get when you buy top tier equipment versus the really mediocre equipment. A lot of people see these things in black and white. Either it's a good product or it's a bad product. But one of the things that a lot of people miss out on, one metric that's really important when we're talking about these different types of equipment is consistency. So what I mean by consistency is, is this product good on a regular basis? Meaning, can I buy one today, one tomorrow, and one next week from now, and each time I get the product, know that I'm getting a good product? The second thing I mean with consistency is, do I actually have to research all of a company's products before buying them, or can I just simply know that every time I'm buying that product, I'm getting an excellent product? I want to use a few examples of this with products that I've talked about and products I've reviewed, and I also want to use some real-world circumstances of when this is important. So, a very popular brand in the cheap soldering community is Ayue. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. It's A-O-Y-U-E. And you're going to see a lot of really, really good reviews of these products and a lot of really, really bad reviews of these products. And a lot of people don't understand how it is that a product can be so widespreadly crapped upon by professionals when you see all these good reviews for it online. And a lot of people assume that it's just that the people leaving the good reviews are uninformed or misinformed or don't understand how the equipment works or don't understand what they should be expecting. And that's not really the case. The case is that with a lot of this equipment, I could buy that station today. You could buy that station next week. We could have went to Amazon.com or Alibaba and bought the exact same product. And you could get shipped something that works amazingly well. And I could get shipped something that's a complete pile of crap. Because when you get into this, into the price wars and it's this really, really cheap equipment, what you have to realize is that the quality control on it is not very good. Meaning that, again, you could buy right now and get a totally different product than I get if I buy that product one week from now for the same price, off of the same website. And that's something that's really going to screw with you if you're doing this professionally. So this is something that is okay for the hobbyist, but it may not be as good for the professional. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say you're soldering at home and you're not doing anything where there's really a lot of money at stake. So you're working on your own personal projects, you want to repair your own little amplifier, you have a little Arduino board, you want to put some cool stuff on it, You're doing something where there's not a lot of money at stake. So if you get something and it sucks, well, it sucks, but you could send it back. You can get another one of the same product and see if you get a good one. Or it's not really going to cost you a lot of money. But in a production environment like mine, where let's say, you know, there are thousands upon thousands of dollars at stake if this or this go down for a week of time, then it really is worth it. I may actually spend 200, 300, 500, or $1,000 more than you to get a product that, you know, as luck may have, it works as well as yours that's a lot cheaper, that's the knockoff. But what I'm paying for, I'm not just paying for a better product. Because I will admit that sometimes I'm sure there are some cheaper soldering stations than the Hacko setup I have here that do the job just as well. What I'm paying for is the peace of mind knowing that when this arrives, it's actually going to allow me to work and make money. Because with a lot of the cheaper stations, there is a, there is a higher percentage that... I may get this thing. There's a higher percentage chance that I get this and it winds up being a complete pile of crap. And for you, the hobbyist, again, if you're working on an Arduino board or you're doing, a, a, you know, you're just breadboarding your own, your own little small project or a little thing where you put your finger in front of a laser and it changes the color of light or something like that, that's not going to cost you a lot of money. If you have to wait another week to get a different product, it's not really going to kill you if the thing stops working. But in a production environment, Again, it's not about us being rich. It's not about us wanting stuff with name brand recognition to impress customers. It really just is a question of, if I get this and it doesn't work, how much money will that cost me? Because if it's going to cost me nothing, then I might have the time to experiment and cheap cheap out and buy some garbage. But if it's going to cost me a few hundred bucks, I'll buy this. Now, in higher-end environments where there's millions or hundreds of thousands of dollars at stake for a few days of downtime, you're going to see even more expensive equipment like the high-end JBC and Ursa stuff that you don't often see in these small repair shops. So in small repair shops, you're probably going to see a lot of hacko, stuff like this, because it's the cheapest that you can get where you're getting stuff that works very well. And I've done a few equipment reviews on it. You can see what I think a lot of this Hacko gear. It's the cheapest that you can get for something that is quality where you know every single time you get it, you're getting a, this piece of gear is actually going to work. The one that I get today is going to be the same as the one that you get next week. Consistency. It's the cheapest for that. Now let's talk a little bit about product line consistency, which is a different type of consistency. 
The first type of consistency that I discussed has to do with quality assurance and quality control, meaning everybody who buys an FX951, regardless of what time you buy it, you're getting a 951 that works the same as everybody else's. That's quality control and quality assurance. Now, what I mean about product line consistency is, okay, you guys make a great hot air station. Can I trust that you'll make a great soldering iron? Okay, you guys make a great soldering iron. Can I trust that you'll make a great micro-soldering iron? You guys make a great micro-soldering iron. Can I trust that you're going to make a great micro-soldering pencil? You guys make a great micro-soldering pencil. Can I trust that you're going to make a great hot air pencil? So that's product line consistency, meaning that once I've purchased one product from you and I see that it's good, do I actually have to do the research to figure out if the rest of your products are good or crap? So let's say I add a new division or I add a new repair service or I add a new department where they need a different tool. One of the things that I'm paying for is actually not doing the research to figure out if your tool is good or a pile of crap because I'm, I don't have the time. So one of the things that you're going to notice as you move on with your career as a technician, as a technology person, as an electronics repair person, is that in the beginning, you're going to start out with a lot of time to figure out all these things. You're going to start out with a lot of time to do research to figure out how things work, to figure out how circuits work. You're going to have a lot of time to figure out what gear you want, but since you just started, you don't have a lot of money. So it's worth it to put a lot of time into these decisions. It's worth it to put a lot of time into figuring out if I spend $100 less, can I get the same thing? And you're going to move on with your career, and you're going to you know, you're going to have like three and a half full shelves full like this with people's motherboards that need repairing. And once you're at that point, now your your, your uh, time is a little bit more valuable to you than your money. I can't really afford to spend two hours on the internet reading as to whether this hot air station is going to work as well as this hot air station and all these different environments. I can't afford a week of downtime from buying it, realizing it's a piece of shit, and sending it back. So let's talk a little bit about product line consistency. Hacko makes a great standard hot air station. They make a great micro-soldering pencil. So I figured that Hacko makes a great all-in-one station which is why Jessa Jones decided to buy the FM206 for Practical Board Repair School because they thought it would be great to have an all-in-one station so at the teacher's desk there'd be less clutter, you could have all the devices plugged in, this would be great, right? Wrong, because the hot air pencil that comes with that piece of gear is a steaming pile of crap. And if you search for FM-206, you'll see my review on it where... I'm trying to remove components with it, and they, they, they don't want to come off. I'm trying to put components back on the board, and they don't want to go back on. That is only good for removing stuff from you know just basic single-layer PCBs. If you're actually trying to use it on a multi-layer PCB, or especially a MacBook motherboard, you are in for a world of fucking pain. It is a complete nightmare. Now, again... I can't blame Hacko too much because it is cheaper. It is cheaper than all the other brands of gear. So product line again product consistency like consistency in a specific, in quality control I can get that from Hacko. Can I get product line consistency from Hacko meaning that every single Hacko product I buy is going to hit it out of the park? No. Hacko gear is too cheap for me to expect product line consistency. Whereas a company like JBC, JBC makes gear that's a lot more money, but then I get that product line consistency there. So, they make a micro soldering um Micro soldering hot air pencil, meaning it is a hot air station with a really, really thin hot, you know, hot air, uh, hot air iron, hot air. What am I thinking of? I'm gonna have to uh, hot air handpiece. That's what I'm thinking of. The word here for this thing is handpiece. So they make a really thin hot air handpiece, and just because JBC gear costs so much money. I don't really have to do the research that much to see if is this thing a steaming pile of crap. For the amount of money that their stuff costs, you had better bet your ass that they put work, time, and effort into ensuring that every product they make is actually useful, and that is the case. As you can see in my JBC review, that when I use the JBC Precision Hot Air, you realize that when you use that JBC Precision Hot Air, even though it's a really, really thin micro-soldering pencil handpiece of a hot air station, it actually performs on par with this. It's not as strong as their large hot air handpiece, but their pencil, the thing that's this fucking thin, is as strong as this. And that, I think that's pretty cool. But the, again, you pay for that with JBC Gear. You pay for product line consistency. You pay to know that every single time you buy a JBC product, you are getting something that is amazing. And that's admittedly something I can't say for Weller or Hacko. Weller or Hacko will make a bunch of amazing gear. 
and I will use it and I will like it. But again, the Weller WR3000M, the hot air station, the hot air that comes with that is fucking worthless. I can't do anything with that. The Hakko uh, FM206, well, I believe the FM2029, I think the airflow is limited to 6 or 10 liters a minute. I think it's around 6 liters a minute on that. And the heat, like it, it, it barely pushes anything. You could put it to eight or 900 degrees. Good luck getting anything off a motherboard with that for the type of stuff that I work on. It's not happening. It's it just it doesn't work, and it's just, it's just a lack of product line consistency. So when you see that companies that have a lot of money are using this high end gear, it's not because they have the money to burn. It's not because they want to show off that they have nice stuff. It's because they value consistency. Because the consistency is going to go up in importance with the amount of money that is at stake. So if there's 50 bucks at stake, well, who the hell cares? You have the time to figure out, you know, you have the time to buy the cheap gear and find one that works for you. If you have a few hundred to a few thousand dollars at stake, well, I am going to do my research to buy a product that's good, and then I'm going to buy the good product. But when you have millions of dollars at stake, you really, you, you can't afford to figure out, oh, well, they released a different product or an updated product or this, that, or the other. You really can't afford to figure out that that product is a piece of shit. Because then it's costing you hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's why companies like JBC do so well in those high-end environments with these large corporations because they just they don't have the time to Google and figure out, hey, I have a great hot air station from company X. Does their all-in-one with a hot air station work well? They don't want to do that. They have, they have the money and the resources to not bother with that. They value product line consistency. So realize that, again, you're not just paying for the quality of the product. One of the things you're actually paying for when you buy higher-priced gear, one of the things that I'm looking for is not having to waste time on research to figure out that your stuff is actually good. Because that's actually worth something. Believe it or not, me not having to research, me not having to buy something and know that there's a chance I have to send it back because it's a steaming pile of crap, is actually worth 50 or 100 or $200 to me at this point with where I am financially and with how much time I have. And not having to do research to figure out that the updated version of your product or the upgraded or the newer ver- revision of your product is a pile of crap for whatever reason is important to me. Knowing that when I buy a product, that the product I buy today is going to be the same as the product that I buy next week for the other bench over there, that's actually that's actually part of what I pay for. I will pay an extra $100, i will pay an extra $300 just to know that I'm not rolling the dice with whether or not the product that I buy now is different than the product I buy next week. So when you look at the gear prices, don't think that what you're, that what you're paying for is solely can this solder as well as this. Because if you look at it that way, it's really easy to look at some of the higher-end gear as a total, complete ripoff. What you're paying for is consistency. And consistency is something that is very important.